You know what else would give me a moment? I know what would give me a moment. Uh, $150 million, uh, which is, I think, what Nick Bose is about to get. One fifty. Well, guaranteed. What are, well, what are we looking at? We're looking at a five-year extension, and we're looking at something, give or take, 30, 30 ish. Yeah, you figure thirty-two Maybe would change, more? so one sixty. Okay. Five and thirty-two would be one sixty. Well, it sounds not guaranteed. Me, again, Albert Breer's report earlier today is, is that they're four million dollars apart. They have been four million dollars apart for a while. They're trying to bridge that gap. It is already a foregone conclusion that he will be the highest-paid edge rusher of all time per year, and right now T.J. Watt's at 28, so go north of 28. But what Breer said was it remains to be seen if he becomes the highest-paid non-quarterback of all time, which is Aaron Donald at 31.7. So a lot of us have grabbed that $4 million window and thought, okay, Niners must be at 29, and Nick must be at 33. And um, if they're having a hard time bridging that gap, for me, I'm like, you're both at fault. This is, this is on both of you, and especially if you've been at $4 million for a while. There's a game in nine days, and you both bear responsibility. The Niners clearly are going to have to come a little bit up, and Nick Bosa, I would argue, has a little bit more leverage than the 49ers do here. He's that good. He is that important. He's the DPOY. But by the same token, if you're Nick Bosa and you're like, hell bent on I've got to be the highest paid non-quarterback of all time I would argue that you can come down a little bit and still hold that label and and that's fair too so I would lean a little bit maybe if those are the numbers I'd lean a little bit in Nick's direction but it feels like get to 32 both sides and be done with this what are we doing but I'm not going to put all the blame on one side or the other which it feels like a lot of people have been willing to do. Yeah, and I'm I'm willing to do it because as a fan, I want to see number 97 in his four-point stance coming off the ball and showcasing all of his moves when he wants to ru- rush the passer and playing good stout defense against the run and being an absolute game wrecker and doing a little shrug, the little Nick Bosa shrug and hearing his post-game commentary with his casual surfer tone that belies the ferocity with which he plays. I want all of it, Mark, I, and, I, and I demand it of my team to get this done. And if it comes down to $4 million a year over five years, which is only $20 million, only $20 million, don't drag your feet, get it done, make it happen. So I'm not putting 100% of the blame on the team, but in terms of the teeter-totter of blame, my blame leans heavy on the team and well, less heavy on the player. Hard cap league. Sure. Okay, yeah. right? Well, kind of. Yeah. You hard, said cap schmap. I did, but it's still hard. It's it's not arguable. It's a hard cap league. Yep. It's got a cap. It's got a hard cap league. You got about $8 million under the cap right now this well, year. Well, I guess fa- fans are going to do this. And by the way, way on in, 888-957-9570. I get it. For me, it's because fans, you're bigger fans of Nick Bosa than you are executives. And, and that makes full sense to me. But the other side to it is, if, if that's your take every time, every time a player's good, pay him. Well, just give him what he wants. I remember the takes when we were talking about Aaron Judge. And I'm already hearing them preemptively about Shohei Otani. Well, if the Dodgers come in at $600 million, then just give him $800 million. <laughs> Just do it. What do you have to lose? Well, a lot. A lot. Now, is $4 million or $20 million, is that going to bankrupt the 49ers? No, that's not my point. My point is, is why is that your take every time? Vary your take would be my take. You can't just say every time two sides are closed. Well, come on. He's good. So give it to him, and then let's move on. Because if you do that every time... At a certain time, you're going to get to the point where you can't do it anymore, yeah. and you're going to let somebody who's really good walk. It's never been my take every time. No, and historically, not, not you. I know, I'm just yeah. saying, saying my piece, and historically, I've been much more pro-management than I've been pro-player when it comes to these deals. This is a case where I think you do break the bank, and even if it means you reset the market, you're resetting the market that doesn't really affect you in terms of you're not going to have to pay another edge rusher this kind of money for a very, very long time, if ever, because you're going to be good and you won't be able to draft 
number two again and be able to take Nick Bosa like you did. I look at the number 160 million, 32 million a year, and if you give him the same level of guarantee that his brother got, which was 75% of his total value was guaranteed, Nick would get about 110 guaranteed, which would set the record. And that to me is a number that I could live with if I'm Nick Bosa. Yeah, I, I like I wonder actually if we're even aiming high when we just toss out like get to 32 and move on. Charles Davis came on earlier, and, and he was not like, like, no, you don't automatically get more than Aaron Donald. Why would you get more than Aaron Donald? Now, Aaron Donald's older, but Aaron Donald's already gotten his contract. And I remember all the same things were said about Aaron Donald three years ago when that contract was getting ready. Every player in the NFL is like, dude, this guy is by far and away the hardest thing to deal with on the defensive side of the ball in the NFL. And he's not an edge rusher. So why are we bringing Aaron Donald into this? Nick was the DPOY last year. TJ Watt was the DPOY the year before that. Why should Nick? Because think about it from the Niners' perspective. Here's what the Niners are thinking. That's great that you want to bring up Aaron Donald. He ain't nothing to do with you. He's not an edge rusher. It's a completely different position. Why would we take Miles Garrett, Joey Bosa, and T.J. Watt and their numbers, which are all stacked right up next to each other, 26 and a half, 27, 28, and you want 33? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> What the hell's that about? You're the best edge rusher in the game. Let's make you the best edge rusher in the game. Just because you were the DPOI last year, and again, I, I, just for a moment, I'm giving you the Niners side. I'm not even saying I agree with all of this. But the Niners are looking at this going, dude, you're not really all that different from T.J. Watt. You're not all that different from Miles Garrett. It's just your turn. It's just your turn. So why should we give you like a 20% raise over what your counterparts are making just because it's your turn? Usually it goes up a million bucks, not six. Yeah, it depends on how you look at it. And I do think that Aaron Donald is a comp, and you can say edge versus interior defensive lineman. Aaron Donald is an absolute unicorn. He's an outlier in terms of interior defensive lineman, and his contract was fully guaranteed. He got $95 million, I think, over three years, and it was a full guaranteed deal. Was it? I was just looking at yeah. uh, Spotrack, as I like to call it, yeah. and uh, I believe his, his deal was 100% guaranteed, so... In terms of guaranteed money, uh, Joey Bosa got $102 million guaranteed on his deal. So if I'm Nick, and the real money, the real figure you're looking at if you're Nick Bosa is the guaranteed money. So I would want more than Joey got, which was $102 million on the guarantee. Whatever else happens for the cosmetic number after that, it doesn't really matter as much to me. But if I'm Nick... I absolutely want more than 102. Miles Garrett got 100 Agreed. guaranteed. Yeah. Joey got 102 guaranteed. Give me 105 guaranteed. And then whatever you want to do with the rest of the money, it's inconsequential. Well, and I agree with that. And again, it's your turn. And you're the DPOY. So you get the biggest contract. That means the biggest guarantee. That means the biggest edge rusher in, in the history of the NFL. If that means it's more than Aaron also... I, like, my mind is open to that. I feel like everybody made it automatic. And I'm like, why? Why? T.J. Watt didn't, like, they didn't do that for T.J. Watt. They didn't do that for Joey Bosa. They didn't do that for Miles Garrett. Why suddenly Nick? And here's one other thing that gets me about these conversations. Here, here's where I will actually side with the organization. You hear this a lot. Well, it's the Bosa's. You know the Bosa's. The Bosa's are stubborn, and they know their value. So now I got to pay this guy more because of his last name? That I don't get. Uh, that I don't. I, no. No. You don't get more just because you're a Bosa, and you have a, your family has a history of holdouts. Like, that's on you if you're overly stubborn. You got to play the game. And, and, and Nick's got a lot of leverage here. The 49ers have some, too. I think there's a meet-in-the-middle spot here. But 
good Lord, I hope the reasoning for the Niners caving is not because, welp, we thought the number was 30, but he's a Bosa. So we'll do 32. Yeah. Uh, what? Well, I think that he, him being a Bosa matters to the extent that he is your Bosa and you are fancying yourself as one of the best defenses in football. I believe they were the first defense taken in the 95 7 the game fantasy league which is apropos of next to nothing, but it does show that people think that the Niners will be a good defense. The Niners themselves think that they're going to have a good defense. And we've talked a a little bit about the problems with the Niners this year. We've talked about a kicker who is inconsistent and a little bit injured, and we've talked about the right tackle. Can he be good enough? And we also talk about a secondary that has one really, really good corner and a couple of question marks at corner, and the one way to make those cornerbacks look better is to have a nasty pass rush. Totally. So I think that Nick Bosa does have some leverage, not only because he's a Bosa, but because he's your Bosa. That, now that and I you agree got with. a Bosa. I I think he's probably got a little more leverage than the Niners, and I think that's probably why he's he, he might win this uh, he might win this battle, but he doesn't get to just throw out a number and then sit until the Niners get there, because he's not. Not a human being. That's not how this works. You, you don't get just to tell the 49ers what to do. Right. And then if they won't do it, you complain to Albert Breer and, and we all rip the Niners. That that to me is where this this can can end up in an unfair spot. Joey got five and one thirty five. Right. And a hundred and two of that was guaranteed. Yeah. So Nick is probably looking for I mean five and even five and one fifty. Average annual value would which be is less not, than... Which is not unfair. No, that would be less than Aaron Donald. Yes. As far as average annual goes, and the guaranteed number would probably be about 110. Yeah, great. Or make it 120. Or hell. I mean, if you're, if you're worried about AAV, if you're the Niners, just guarantee the whole thing. I know the Niners aren't into that usually. Right. But that would be my next leverage spot if I'm the Niners. Joey wants five and one sixty because you want that label of highest paid non quarterback ever. Yeah, and and he's saying give me five one sixty and guarantee a buck twenty. I come back and I'm the Niners and I say five one fifty and have the whole damn thing. Yeah, they don't want that. I I don't know if they want that. It helps your cap if yeah, that's what you're. If it that's becomes what you're worried a fixed about. cost for sure. It's fixed, yeah. But I think that the cap it's, number. It's, but it's a twenty-something-year-old superstar. Right. It's not like you're going to want to get rid of him. Uh, sixth in football in sacks since he came in the league in 2019. Yeah. Nick Bosa. Yeah. Behind just... such names as the aforementioned Watt, T.J. Watt, Miles Garrett, uh, Cameron Jordan is third. Aaron Donald. Uh-huh. Out of the nose, three technique is fourth, and then you get to Matthew Judon is a half a sack ahead of Nick Bosa. And he missed a year. Yeah. And he missed a year during that time. Nick He's, Bosa, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nasty. He's the best. So pay him like the best. Exactly. You're finally coming around to my way of thinking. No, I think they are. So I think the Niners are, are there. The Niners are paying him like the best. They want to offer him the best edge rusher in the NFL. Highest if, ever. If they were there, then... Well, we're here. They're there. And they're there. <laughs> Shout out, Jonathan. They are. They're there. That's the report. They're there. But Nick wants him over there. He wants them all the way down the street over there at highest paid non-quarterback of all time. I'll tell you what, Niners. Do me a favor. Yeah. And uh, either get it done in the next, I don't know, five or ten minutes or wait till Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, that's Come on. Fun. Uh, I don't. I don't care about whether or not he sneaks it in over the, the final forty-five minutes of our show. I would like it to be done so that Nick's at practice at the start of the week. That I would love to see that. I would love to see that. And by the way, that would fit into the report. Jason Dumas said should be a few days by the weekend. Okay, and I believe it. I believe it. I think. Um, I think this thing gets announced. Um, I don't know by by Sunday. Better not be a Friday news dump tonight. I don't know why it would be. It's a good. It's a good story. It is. The Niners and Bosa are not going to want it tucked underneath anything. But once it's done, this thing. I mean, heck, the uh, the Sam Darnold over Trey Lance news leaked before Kyle could even get a headset on and uh, talk to people and stuff. So yeah, that one had a that was a lot more complicated than this. This is just hey, okay, deal done. 
See you next week. Right, but my point is, as soon as the deal is done, there'll be a certain amount of immediate leakage, or leakage, as the French would say. It would be imminent, and that thing's yeah. coming out. There's no yeah. holding it until Monday. No, no, no. I, I agree with you. Gene in Oakland here with Wither and Dibs. Hi, Gene. What are you doing? Hey, fellas. Uh, I'm sitting with the dog, waiting to go to the park. Oh, I love Give it. Give me an ugly look right now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, first of all, quickly, uh, it was great meeting you guys finally the other day. Uh, the grandkids had a great time, too, so... Thanks for putting on an excellent event. No, you too, Appreciate Gene. Thank, thank you guys for making the trip. It really, really means the world. Yeah. So on the Bosa thing, um, I'm about ready to explode. If they don't get this thing done by this weekend, I'm going to be very angry with Prarag. I mean, uh, it, it, it begins to look like it's an ego thing with him. And if, it, if, if they don't get this done until, let's say, early to mid next week, that's seriously jeopardizing uh, Bosa's chance to play in that first game. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking ahead. Worst case, we're going to be playing Pittsburgh. That's already a tough game. It's supposed to be tight. I think we're only, what, two-point favorites or something? Yeah, two and a half. You know, without, yeah, without, without Bosa, we very well lose a game that we uh, very well could uh, are expected to win. Well, but, Gene, can, can, I, ask you, game? can I ask you a question, Whatever. Gene? Can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why, if it doesn't happen, are you definitely mad at the Niners, not Nick? Because, of, because I'm, I'm, I'm trusting that this four million dollars apart is accurate, and for for four million dollars apart, you're going to jeopardize his playing the first game, or potentially jeopardize our chance to go to a Super Bowl. Come on, man. That's yeah. just that's, that's something terribly wrong with that. Well, so. for for me, I, like Gene, I, it's not that I, I I understand the sentiment. And thanks, Gene. Great, great to see you. Get the dog going. I it, like. I understand the sentiment. I'm not even saying I disagree, but I do think we should stop dismissing four million dollars. Ah, just four million bucks. It's just what it doesn't work. It, that it it's business. Sure. It doesn't mean the 49ers don't have four million bucks to give Nick Bosa. It means $4 million on the cap is a chip, and it is not insignificant, and it is going to be a five-year run that actually leads up to $20 million, and that's other players. That's what you're saying. That's other players that, that you're sacrificing there. And, and, and then I think there's this. There's precedent. Dibs, what do you think about this? Because we, we started this conversation. I think I know how you feel about it. But this probably, the more I, I read about this and listen, I wonder if this isn't what's going on. The Niners are like, we want to, we want to pay you like an edge rusher. And Nick is like, no, I want to be paid like a defensive lineman. Well, who's right in that conversation? Well, I mean, it, it's a case of semantics, but... It's a case of a whole lot of money is what it is. It is, but, you know... Like, are you using T.J. Watt as your starter, or are you using Aaron Donald? And who's he's right? He's using Aaron Donald. And the Niners are using Watt. And he's right. Why? Because he's their best defensive player, and it's not even close. And the fact that Aaron Donald does what he does from the interior is a crazy anomaly. But uh, Nick Bosa is as impactful, or probably more impactful now, on the Niners' defense than Aaron Donald is on the Rams defense I agree with right that. now. I agree. So Nick Bose is thinking, you know, don't worry about what position I play because when I'm on the field, <laughs> I wreak havoc. Okay, but but here, here would be my response to that. You have said many times that Brock Purdy is not the most important player on the 49er offense. Right. Who is? Uh, probably Trent Williams, I, that's Christian what, McCaffrey. That's what I figured you'd say. Yeah. So if I'm Trent Williams and you're okay with a player coming in and saying, forget my position, if Trent Williams says, I'm the best player on your offense. And the comp around the league is that the best player on the offense gets $52 million a year. So I'd like $52 million a year. And you would say to Trent Williams what? You are more replaceable than Nick Bosa is, so that's going to be a no from me dog. Because already the left tackle market is a spot where you get very, very well compensated and highly paid. Yeah. And for the sake of this conversation... I will remove the reality that Trent Williams is an older player and then he's not going to be in line for one of these deals. Oh, well I, then go I McCaffrey. Think, go McCaffrey. He's 27. McCaffrey's a different story. Okay, what's the and, story? Well, the story with McCaffrey is, I hate to break it to you, son, but uh, you're a running back. Uh -huh. And what we've seen from running backs is when they get over 
the 2000 touch mark, forget the age, you start to see a little bit of wear and tear and you deteriorate. Yeah, so, but why can't he say what you just said Nick Bosa can say, which is, no, forget my position. I'm the best player on the on this side of the ball. Right. But okay. again, it comes down to value over replacement player. And the ability to replace Nick Bosa is next to impossible. Those uh, those edge rushers come along maybe once a year, if that, oh, and they yeah. go at the top of the draft. Agreed. You, you already have three other running backs and Debo Samuel who can approximate Hmm. what Christian McCaffrey does in some ways. Yeah, we don't hear a lot of that around here these days, though. I mean, the idea that, I mean, Christian McCaffrey, it feels like in the NFL with what we saw this offseason is one of one. I understand that he's a running back. Yeah. He's not like any of the other running backs, and you see what's happening to the other running backs. Derrick Henry and Josh Jacobs and Saquon Barkley and Austin Eckler are on Zooms together trying to figure out how to get money to the running back position. Right. But McCaffrey's making $16 million a year because he's McCaffrey. Because he's not just a running back, he's also a receiver and a this and a that and the other. So the idea of positionless contracts is a dangerous one for teams. Um, I get, like, I remember Jimmy Graham years ago. Jimmy Graham, uh, still in the league, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I saw that. Um, but, but his first tour of duty with the Saints... When he was the dude, he was the number one tight end off the board in your fantasy draft, Jimmy Graham. That guy could not block anyone, but my God, he could catch a pass, and he could get down the seam, and he was a real weapon for Drew Brees. And Jimmy Graham went to the Saints because it was contract time, and he said, I know that it says T-E next to my name when they put it on TV, but I'm a receiver for all intents and purposes. And the Saints went, cool. Now you're a bear. And then a Seahawks. And now, eventually, back to the Saints again to back up some rookie named Juwan Johnson. The bottom line is, I think you're real hard-pressed as a player to go convince your team that you're not your position because financially it would be better to not be your position. Nick Bosa is the best edge rusher in the game. And the Niners are trying to pay him as the best edge rusher in the game. I don't know if it's fair. Yeah. I got I, I to study this more. I'm not saying, I'm not drawing a line in the sand, but I don't know if it's fair to be like, yeah, but Aaron Donald plays defense, and I play defense, and he's on the line, and I'm on the line, so I should get more than him too. Meanwhile, the top edge rusher in the game makes 28, and we're all sitting here going, Nick should make 33, and we shouldn't even blink. Ah, uh, I get why. If that's the holdup, I don't know that it is. But if that's where this conversation is right now, I understand why the Niners are doing what they're doing. 